Hello and welcome everyone. This is Dr. Shabtosh Shibanji coming to you in this difficult crisis times where India is reeling under a second deadly COVID wave. I've shared with you my COVID story last year, how I overcame COVID with homeopathy. And now when people are dying, not because of the complications of the coronavirus, but because of lack of resuscitation in the hospitals, homeopathy can really stand up and make a notice. There's a two-part series of a video which I'll be sharing with you, compiled by me and my father, Dr. Shubhrata Banji, which includes remedies which can help in this crisis situation when people are gasping for breath. Every breath of oxygen is important. And because of the scarcity of beds, because of the scarcity of conventional medical infrastructure, it is time homeopathy makes a notice. Without further ado, I'd like to share with you a few of our top remedies which I have implemented. Being a busy practitioner in Calcutta, I have encountered hundreds of COVID patients over the year last year and especially this year when people are having hypoxic symptoms complaining of breathlessness where the oxygen saturation levels have declined in a very short span of time homeopathy can always help you this is again a two-part series i'll share with you my top seven remedies in this part one number one my friends in no order of importance, but depending on what symptoms you're observing. Especially, I'm reaching out to my homeopathic fraternity across the country, and I hope not. You I hope you do not need these remedies across the globe, like India is suffering so much, but still to have it handy at your disposal. My number one remedy, my friends, is Antim Tart, Antimonium Tartaricum. Again, I'm sharing with you no order of importance, but Antim Tart is a very important remedy for hypoxia in these conditions. If you think of Antim Tart, there's a lot of mucus in the lungs, a lot of mucus in the bronchi. Patient wants to bring it out, but unable to expectorate. So if you think of all those hypoxic conditions when there's a lot of catar, a lot of mucus, patient wants to bring it out, is not being able to do so. Antim Tart can help you. With this kind of mucus, catar, there's a lot of sleepiness and drowsiness. It is Nash's trio of sleepy medicines, Antim Tart, Naxmos, Chada, and Opium. Antim Tart, Naxmos, and Opium. These is Nash's trio of sleepy remedies. And with this kind of mucus, catar, patient is drowsy, patient is sleepy. It's hard for you to keep him awake, losing consciousness to a certain extent. Antim Tart can come to your rescue. Kent mentions this in his Metromedica. Patient is dying from carbonic acid poisoning. So because of the lack of oxygen, the carbon dioxide is getting accumulated in the system. It's like a carbonic acid poisoning. Why? Because the lungs are failing. There is lack of expulsive power of the lungs. So do remember, and Tim Tart will always come to your rescue in these conditions, in this crisis of hypoxia. Try and complete this picture with modalities. Look for modalities even with Antim Tart. Better by eructation is important with asthma. Better by lying on right side. You understand with this hypoxic condition, patient is constantly turning on one side to another. Ask him if you feel a little better, particularly on any side. Antim Tart will tell you, I feel better on my right side. That's important for Antim Tart. My friends, coming very close on the heels of Antim Tart is Epicac. Again, Epicac is a remedy which is indicated in this situation. If you think of all the conditions, all the remedies which have got bronchoconstriction, which produces bronchoconstriction, which is producing bronchospasm, causing the hypoxia, Epicac is also one of your remedies. If you think in Epicac, there is a lot of constriction of the chest and the throat. Patient is telling you, I feel constricted. I feel constricted in my throat, in my chest. Again, very suffocative cough, causing cyanosis, causing blueness, 
to a certain extent. Like and Tim Tut, Ipica can also have that. But one of the differentiating factors, patient is feeling nauseous in Ipicac, not so in Antim Tart. Again, look for modalities, worse from exertion. All respiratory conditions for Ipicac are worse from exertion. The cough is worse from exertion. In this kind of dyspnea, it's an exertional dyspnea in case of Ipicac as well. So look for the constriction, look for the constriction of the chest and throat. Not look, ask from the patient. What do you feel? I feel constricted in my chest. I feel constricted in my throat. You have that with the apicot. There's a nauseous feeling. Sometimes with this second wave, you'll find gastrointestinal symptoms superimposed with the respiratory as well. And the patient is feeling nauseous. Patient is feeling like vomiting. You have that with the apicot. Modality or from exertion. You have that with the apicot. My third remedy, my friends, which again comes closely. I'm trying to compare similar remedies so that you can quickly differentiate hydrocyanic acid are the very important and useful remedy in these conditions if you think again the covid patients are gasping for breath they need every breath of air and in case of hydrocyanic acid there is more constriction in the throat region epicarp will tell you i feel constricted in my chest as well as throat but when in the case of hydrocyanic acid is more constricted in the throat there is collapse they're going to collapse with the hypoxia. And with, with that in hydrocyanic acid, you get a lot of fearfulness. They have a fear of everything. So the anxieties and fears are becoming quite predominant in case of hydrocyanic acid. So a constricted feeling, especially in the larynx, in the throat, which is an in turn causing hypoxia, which in turn is causing lack of space for inhalation and exhalation. Along with that, there is collapse and there's a fearfulness in the background where the patient is really, really fearful. Sometimes you also have to understand with the hypoxia, the emotional component is quite important. With the anxiety and fear becoming predominant, the hypoxia, it will just contribute to it even more. So hydrocyanic acid again will come to your rescue. And Tim Tart, the potency is 6C, 30C, vitality is too low, don't go for higher. Similarly with Epica, Epica really responds well with 12C. So try 12C for Epica. Hydrocyanic acid, 30C as well. My fourth remedy in this list, my friends, and I'm sure a lot of people have been holding this remedy over the last few weeks, is Aspidosperma or Quibraco. Aspidosperma is known as a digitalis of the lung. But again, my friends, look for symptoms. Not every patient of hypoxia will respond to Aspidosperma. Look for symptoms like this breathlessness from exertion. So whenever I'm exerting, I'm moving, I feel breathless. And that's a gem indication for prescribing Aspidosperma or Quibraco. Difference with Epica, Epica has a constriction with aggravation exertion. In case of Aspidosperma, no constriction, it's just breathlessness worse from exertion. And that's very important for Aspidosperma. And one of the very important factors why Aspidosperma has been helping patients across India is it stimulates the respiratory centers. It stimulates the oxygen in the blood so that the hypoxic condition is gradually reduced over course of time. Tincture works well for Aspidosperma, 6C and 30C as well, responding well with Aspidosperma in the present scenario. My next medicine in this list, my friends, is Vanadium Metallicum. Vanadium Metallicum is a metal which always helps as an oxygen carrier it works as a catalyst so whenever in hypoxic conditions you are having scarcity of symptoms look for the generals anemia if you make a triangle anemia on one hand loss of appetite on the other hand emaciation on the other hand and you make this triangle you combine that with the hypoxia you have an idea i repeat anemia on one hand loss of appetite on the other hand emaciation on the other hand these three as work as a triad. It works as a symptomatic complex to help you overcome cases of hypoxia with vanadium. Especially it acts as oxygen carrier. My friends do remember vanadium is a metal. It won't work with lower potencies. Although the vitality is low, do not prescribe 6C. Try 30C. Even some cases 200C may be necessary because a metal doesn't ever respond to the lowest potencies. My friends, my next medicine in this list, another superb celebrated medicine used for ages and centuries is carbo vegetabilis. You can never make a prescription of carbo, you can never miss a prescription of carbo veg in the present conditions. Patient is gasping for breath. 
is prepared from carbonates. So you always have that innate air hunger in carbo vegetables. So either they need artificial air, fanning makes them better, or they need fresh open air. Either way, carbo veg will feel better. Fresh open air, they feel better. Even fanning makes them better and fanning from a very close distance. Because you understand that effort of inspiration and expiration is difficult for their constitution. They cannot do it. They do not have the vitality left in them to inspire and exhale. So you need the fan very close to your face so that the air goes straight into the mouth. So better by fanning, better by fresh open air. That's important. In a system where the patient is telling you, again, cases where gastrointestinal and respiratory symptoms are overlapped, patient is telling you that I feel burning in my chest. Internal burning is there. You touch the chest, you touch their hands, you touch their feet, it feels cold to touch. So internal burning with external coldness that works wonderfully well for your carbo vegetables. Also, you have to understand for carbo veg, it's a carbon. Like the carbon, it be, it's better in fresh air. Like the carbon, it has coldness. So you touch them, there's always coldness of the affected part. Blueness can also be there, but again, very many cases you may not have, especially with the Indian complexion to understand the blueness to be very prominent. Also have to understand the pathology for carbo veg. If you look in Borikes Metromedica, you'll see it's mentioned disintegration, imperfect oxidation is the keynote of carbo veg. So the oxidation isn't happening properly. And when that oxidation isn't happening properly, blood is stagnating, there is stasis of circulation. That is causing the blueness, that is causing the hypoxia, that is causing the coldness. So when you prescribe carbo veg, the oxidation improves, the sluggishness of circulation will improve. So my friends, again, look for the coldness, look for the fanning amelioration, look for the open air amelioration, look for the internal burning by the external coldness. But most of all, look for the exhaustion of carbo vegetables, which you can never miss out. As I said, it's even a very difficult ordeal to breathe in and breathe out. And my friends, I'll sum up. I'll share with you six antim tart, vanadium, carbo veg, epicac, aspidosperma, hydrocyanic acid. And my last one in this first series is lorosericus. Again, in lorosericus, every metromedica mentions this, and I've had success with patients here as well, where the patient is gasping for breath and lorosericus helps in stimulating respiration as well. Two things to remember for lorosericus it's gasping. <gasps> His patient is not actually breathing, he's gasping, and that's important. Clark mentions this in his Metromedica, he's gasping without really breathing. And you'll find this, those who have COVID patients at home with this kind of respiratory distress, or those who have come across people you know, they are not breathing, <sighs> trying to breathe in that, trying to pull out there, trying, trying to steal a bit of more air as much as you can. So gasping is very important. There's a jelly-like expectoration in lorosericus. So if there is any cough, there's a jelly-like expectoration with that. And again, like aspidosperma, walking aggravates. Always the hand is kept here, is feeling his breathing is going to stop. So aggravation exertion in lorosericus. Aggravation exertion is important like aspidosperma. But what differentiates lorosericus is <sighs> the gasping, which you won't find with any other remedy. Along with that, you have coldness. Along with that, there's a jelly-like expectoration, which will help you to differentiate thoracericus with other remedies. My friends, I've shared with you innate features of these seven remedies. Obviously, ac ac aconitum down to zincum, any remedy can help you. So I'm sure many of you have had success with other remedies, but these are the ones which I've handpicked, especially for pe people who are confused, or homeopaths who need some support. I'm sure these seven can help you. I'll bring you seven more in a few days time. I hope you can help people, you can save people with these few remedies. Thank you very much. Long live Hanuman, long live homeopathy.